Welcome to Sprint. Whoa, my lovely uncle's okay. Welcome to Sprint Point 29 review. The sprint ended on February 3rd. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, today, Eric will go over the UI changes. Adam will talk about providers. Tina on Automate. Joe V will do platform, and Fabian will be joining us to talk about V2V changes. And Mike will uh, talk about QA. Next slide, please. So the numbers are going back up again, which is good. Well, the right numbers are going back up again, the, uh, the merge count. Uh, the overall backlog is dropping still, but there's a two good trend, so let's keep, uh, keep an eye on these, but that's the right directions. Next slide, please. <clears throat> so the mix is uh, pretty even between enhancements and bug fixes. Um, strong third is uh, tech debt reduction uh, on, the, on the merge BRs. Next slide, please. And the big, the big thing to note here is that uh, managed like your content had the biggest change in the overall report. I'm not sure what drove the numbers there. I'll have to take a look and see. Uh, we'll follow up on those. Next slide, please. Eric. Thanks. Yep. In the last uh, sprint, we had 48 PRs merged, including 13 bugs, two enhancements, 18 technical debt, one cleanup, and 14 others. Uh, bug fixes included fixing breadcrumb functionality on Explorer screens that don't contain trees, removing advanced search from the configuration management provider screen, removing filter highlighting and accordions when a filter has been created but not yet applied, displaying toolbar for reports downloads on utilization uh, reports tab when data is available, adding missing dropdowns to the service dialog preview screen, enabling importing tags for VMs using a CSV file, and in the SUI, um, we added a spinner to the login button. Enhancements were identifying invalid catalog items and bundles, um, and allowing non-JSON responses and MIQ fetch. Over to Adam. Thanks, Eric. So for core this sprint, we added a verify credentials task method so that you can actually check credentials for a host over the queue as opposed to directly from the UI controller, which is what it was doing before. Uh, so that method exists now. On Azure, Dan added support for deleting data disks from v VMs before it was only the OS disk that would get deleted. So if you had two disks on the VM, <laughs> the second one wouldn't be created or wouldn't be deleted. Um, OpenStack, they fixed uh, an issue where if you didn't have an undercloud, uh, it was blowing up on refresh checking the block storage disk capacity because it was checking the clusters for that. Uh, they also made a change to allow external tenants, uh, external networks to be visible to all tenants. Uh, on the smart state side, these first two actually were from last sprint, but they were, uh, I didn't cover them last time and they were pretty important, so I want to cover them here. Uh, for the VIX disk lib uh, FFI library, we have a stub uh, SO that allows us to t actually test on Travis now, which we couldn't before. And Jason made a fix to allow that to be uh, to run spec tests on Mac OS X, which was uh, stripping out the LD library path. We also fixed connect params for vSphere 6.7, so uh, you can use that now for FFI VIX disk lib. And in core, we're setting a queue name for host and storage smart state scans so that they can be run by the operations worker. <clears throat> On the overt side, they fixed a parse new data center in the event catcher. Uh, it was checking a class name when it was actually a string coming back. And next slide. Blue screen it. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Uh, okay, so uh, before for VMware, you go on, we'll Adam, before you, Adam yeah. before you go on, could someone just step out of the room for a second and ask the folks outside the room to keep their voices down? One folk. Yeah, I know. Thank you. All right. All right. Um, <clears throat> So uh, for VMware, there's there is a mix-in which allows us to use the emsref object uh, method, and that mix-in wasn't being included in the resource pool subclass, so provisions were failing. Uh, so that was an easy fix, just include the mix-in. We also allow the monitor update thread to be run in the operations worker so that the cache is kept up to date for that worker before that was only possible when run within the broker. Um, so now that's possible to be done from that worker. 
we're also queuing the two snapshot operations as part of a smart state scan for VMware on the operations worker um, before they're being done just in whatever generic worker uh, was running the smart state. And the big one, we finally removed the MCVIM brick, uh, broker worker. There we go, the brick worker. Um, so this was a culmination of a lot of work. Um, we had to move over inventory, operations, smart state, all kinds of things over to, to be able to, to pull this out. So uh, the sprint, we finally merged the removal. So it's no longer, no longer running. Um, all the operations should be run by the operations worker. And if they're not, it's a bug that we need to fix. Um, and uh, there are a couple issues. That first issue covers uh, the reason, the rationale behind the change, and that talk article covers uh, pretty much what the broker used to do, and a little bit more in depth on what we did to replace it. That's it for me. Next slide. Thanks, Adam. Good morning. We had 12 PRs merge this sprint. Um, so Greg enhanced the state var uh, hash class to limit the class types that can be used for state var keys to basic object types. Um, I fixed a retirement error log message um, to be issued only when there's an error. It currently logs the message unconditionally. Lucy fixed a typo in the service orchestration reconfigure automate method. Um, Billy refactored two of the best fit automate methods. And Greg continued the RuboCop cleanup work by updating the dynamic finder calls and um, URI escape methods. And finally, Greg refactored the VM reconfigure task at description method. That's it for automate. Next slide, over to, over to Joe. Next slide, thank you. So 31 PRs were merged across the uh, multiple repos in the platform space this sprint, and we slightly changed the way uh, PRs are identified for the platform slide. So if I have any errors or omissions, or I already know of a duplicate on Tina's slide, we'll try to work to fix that next time. So anyway, starting with enhancements, Adam contributed one that will allow job state transitions to queue a single, a signal on a particular queue name, which will allow states to be run by specific workers. And he contributed another to update us to the more recent version of the secure headers gem. Brandon made some enhancements to our build machine setup. And Nick C contributed uh, the following enhancements. One which allows EVM server to loop through multiple servers as part of the monitor loop in a single process. This will allow all the normal monitoring methods to also work in pods. Another that makes it easier to manage zones and service pods. One, to simplify the process of reloading setting changes from a two-step process to the single uh, reload setting step. And another, to avoid creating the data directory when the server starts by building it in. And one, to remove the unsafe C adder accessor from my GUID cache. Jason added a deprecation warning to enumerables stable sort by method, and Joe R bumped the config gem version for Ruby 2.7 support, and Joe added a migration to upgrade the existing Dropbox depots to the support tools. Next slide, please. And on to bugs. There we go. Um, Adam fixed one where archives would fail because open URI returns string IO for small files instead of the expected temp file. Drew, you fixed the bug in a migration when encountering references to deleted external management systems. And she fixed the nondescript unknown unknowns confusingly generated for some timestamps. And Jason fixed the bug by moving descendant get to class from the scope, from um, object scope. And for continuous integration, there were some changes which I have a duplicate on Tina's slide, sorry about that. that Jason, Dan, and Greg M all contributed to improving um, our continuous integration and test framework. Next slide, please. And on to uh, technical debt, refactoring, and, and general cleanup. Quite a bit of work done in the space. Begin with, Adam removed the no longer needed process message from server method from the MIQ worker class as it was last used by the VIM broker, which is now gone. Nick C. Uh, made multiple contributions. One, he created the UI, API, and remote console services and templates. He also cleaned up some server method names. He removed some methods that had been used by the Vim broker. He removed unused monitoring server method 
from the EVM server class. And he contributed some cleanup to avoid creating the service for pods since the service name is determined by the HTTPD config. Dan cleaned up the unnecessary use of homegrown custom exceptions and corrected the home page in SSH Utils gem spec. Through you addressed some deprecation warnings by removing secrets dot secret token, which is deprecated by the secret key base method. Jason updated Sprockets gem version to address the security issue uh, that was in the older Sprockets version. Nick L removed the no longer needed mount session exceptions, and Satoi removed the no longer used rev OVA settings from our build. And that's it for the platform space. On to the next slide, and Fabian for update on V2V. Do we have Fabian? <laughs> Sorry, my friends. <laughs> Maybe not. He Good. might not have been able to make it. Joe V, would you mind just reading through those since you have sure. Uh, some technical debt and refactoring in the V2B space. Uh, I'll just read through the, them. He fixed the container image registry path, standardized string formatting with uh, um, a new, new, new notation, use input from uh, var libuic in entry points, move write password method to a common area, disable tox spinner for parallel builds. I don't even know what a tox spinner is. We mostly adjusted, he notes that they mostly adjusted vert V2V wrapper to be enabled in the UCI container and called by Manage IQ. And he notes two new features, implement two-phase conversion and add support for it in overt host, which he notes this is a prerequisite for warm migrations, follow up PR will, will be coming. And the other new feature is added ability to download um, QEMU guest agent package at build time. This ships the guest agent in the container image so that uh, V2V can find it. And that seems to be it. Uh, I think that's his only slide. Next slide, please. Yeah, on to Mike and QE update. Do we have Mike or should I keep going? <laughs> I'm going, here. Jeff. I'm trying to unmute. Can you hear me now? <laughs> we can. <laughs> yes, okay. we can. Never Great. stop. <laughs> Sorry, I had to I had to do a two stage unmute. Blue jeans had me muted. Uh, okay, so um, there's uh, some basic stats there for our uh, labels. We had a, a lot of enhancements and test automation uh, go into the the uh, repo this sprint. I think we had uh, just over 50 uh, PRs merged total. Uh, we have a, a new contributor uh, on the team, Mayuri. Uh, she's already started to do some test cleanup for us and, and fix some of our uh, automation, so that's a great early start for her. Uh, we have moved the Manage IQ Wrap and Appy repository uh, into the Red Hat QE organization. So if you're looking for that repo, GitHub will still uh, link it for you, uh, but it has been moved. Uh, we still absolutely uh, welcome all contributions uh, from the community. Uh, just uh, it was not used or directly a part of uh, Manage IQ, so we wanted to, to get it into a more appropriate spot. Uh, we had a, a big fix from Yaroslav Henner this sprint. We were having issues with our uh, pull request tester uh, hanging in PyTest sessions, and he identified uh, a ZMQ hang uh, in uh, uh, Pete Savage's Riggerlib project, which is a core part uh, of our Artifactor plugin for PyTest. Uh, so that has resolved our PRT hangs, uh, and uh, you should be getting better PRT results uh, as a contributor to integration tests. Uh, Nandini has added uh, Ansible Tower API version parameterization. So all of our Ansible Tower testing uh, will now parameterize on V1 and V2 uh, URLs and hit both endpoints. Uh, Devidas has added a uh, bunch of automation for uh, the Appliance Console and Appliance Console CLI uh, around SSL, EVM Server D Control, uh, and the NFS database restores. Asos has uh, dried up the retirement methods, uh, providing 
uh, a scheduled retirement and a retirement now method for both uh, uh, cloud instances and infrastructure VMs uh, for both the entities and collections. So our uh, testing of, of that of those retirement actions uh, is a lot more consistent uh, with a lot less code duplication. And uh, finally, Parth Vivala has uh, automated uh, VM comparison from data stores uh, testing and has automated the provider documentation uh, uh, automating testing of those in the UI. And that's it from the QE side. Thanks. That concludes uh, Sprint 129 review. We'll get together on the 4th, February 19th for Sprint 130. And uh, thanks, Joe V, for all your hard work on uh, V2V. <laughs> Did anybody have any any questions? There was a lot of stuff this sprint. Um, you know, I, I'm pretty impressed with all the things that happened. Wow, I can even keep track of them. No? Okay then. See you in a few weeks, guys. People. Bye. Right, folks. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye.